Hey everybody, Wendy Clinky with Blue Cat Studio. Welcome to day eight of the Advent Ornament Challenge. Here's all the goodness that we've done so far. There's seven of them. I've got them all pinned to a board so I can just keep track of them. Otherwise I keep misplacing them. So today we're gonna do some freehand sketching. So if you don't have your ornaments, it's no big deal. We're gonna start off with a paper. And we're gonna trace ourselves a circle. And uh, you can do this, so don't freak out, okay? If you don't have an ornament, you can always take a jar lid and draw yourself a circle, like so, right? And now you can sketch. In fact, do this on a piece of paper because you're gonna wanna feel good about this before we go straight to the ornament. Okay, so we're gonna start by drawing a line straight down the middle, straight down the middle. I'm just gonna do it twice, right? And then we're going to create a little horizon line down low here. And then up higher, we're gonna take a slightly lower horizon line like this and like this. Cool. All right, next up, we're gonna draw a line. It's a bit above the midpoint. So if this is our midpoint right here, it's about three quarters of the way between here and here. So midpoint and then right about there. All right, cool. Good deal. So now we're going to kind of draw a couple of circles on either side. Here, let me do it louder so you can see. And make it's okay if they're kind of ovally. Don't do yours as dark. I'm just showing you. Hey, Lane. I know it started super early today, right? So from here, we're then going to connect all that with an oval. See how that went? We connected it with an oval. Uh-oh. Man, I had this thing going. It didn't work. Sorry, guys. I'm trying. Um, okay. Okay. So we have the oval. So then from there, we're going to create kind of, so we're going to kind of pick a spot on either side of this, like a little, just kind of mark our notes. And then sort of from the edges of that oval, we're going to draw some lines down. See how that goes. Hey, Carrie, how's it going? Okay. So from here, now we have that little line up the center. We're going to kind of create a little gap right there. And then we're going to take kind of just some little curved lines on either side of that kind of cut off triangle or trapezoid. From here, we're going to sprout some, some tall ears. Right now it looks a little like a kitty cat. So if you make the ears a little extra big, it's a little less cat-like and a little bit more box-like. Next up, just for fun, we're gonna add a tail and that's literally gonna be an arc and an arc, a nice wide arc. And cap that arc like so. All right, from here, sort of on that center line, you're gonna you're going to bring down just a little kind of gentle curve from the from the oval head to start to form the peak of a nose. Oh, no, Carrie says that she loves these, but Michael's is all out everywhere you checked. Um, Amazon does have some. Um, I just was sending somebody the link. Um, I can I can get it to you after we go offline just in case. All right. So from here. Um, basically from right below where the ear thing starts, maybe right here, it's almost like putting glasses on them. You're going to create an arc down like so. And we'll do it again. Kind of an arc down like so. Whoop. That one got a little, a little out there. So I'm hoping you can kind of see how that's forming. And then we've got some little circles here where the feet might be little circles. And then basically from this section right here where the head and that rectangly off, whatever it is, that shape meet, we're going to kind of arch out and kind of create, kind of arc down to where those, where that little gap is. And here we go. Boom, boom. So it's a very caricatured box, but, but this kind of helps you form, form it even if you feel like you can't draw by breaking it down into a series of shapes, you can actually accomplish it. So then right in kind of these circle areas, we're gonna add little, little upside down smiles for eyes. 
and then a little triangle in the nose area. And then if you want, we can even kind of add a little rough on either side to kind of make the face a little wider or just kind of zigzag it out. Now it looks like a fox, right? So now that we've done that, we're actually going to go ahead and do this on the ornament. But I wanted you to get a second to practice this to feel confident. All right, so if we have the ornament, we're going to take our center line. And, you, and here's where I would sketch real light. In fact, so light you may not be able to see what's going on, so I apologize. We want to have our horizon line because we don't want his feet falling right off the thing. And then we keep this one a little lower just so there's room for his ears to come out above it. So here's the center. So we'll go above that for his head. And again, we kind of make those circles to help us form the oval. Whoops. And then we'll make the, sort of from here to here, we'll make the rectangle. So I know I'm going over this a bunch of times, but not all of us are comfortable freehanding. We'll add the arc for the, the tail. I think I want my tail to go up a little higher, so I'm going to bring it up here. That way we have a big fluffy tail. Now I'm going to add those ears that kind of coming out. Boop. Maybe make, make them perking up a little bit. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. And then from right below those ears, we kind of bring that down the center to form the top. And then we kind of bring his little chin down this way a bit too. Eyes, eyes, little circles, little rough. Okay, we now have our fox. He's built. So let's go ahead and color him in. Oh gosh, I took this thing, drew on that one, and taped a different one to my board because, because, because you know, I'm spaced out a little bit. So here we go. Sorry. <laughs> Whoopsies. So as far as colors, um, you know, last night we had a couple of folks saying, hey, I don't have that color. Um, so I figured tonight we would, I would sort of show a range of colors that you could use. So we're going to go with an orange. Here I have a bright orange from Deco Art. I have a jack-o'-lantern orange. I have a scarlet. And if I turn that up, you can see it's a much redder orange. Nice to have, but a regular red would also work. This one's almost too dark for all of the fox. Red Hot is also a really nice orangey red. And then there is Canyon Orange. So really, any of these will suffice. This is a pretty flexible project. Grab what you have. And if you just have plain old orange orange, use plain old orange orange. Looks like my jack-o'-lantern orange is the one that's open. So I'm just going to plow that one right here. And you want to get yourself a medium, medium to small round brush. Depends on what you're comfortable working with. I'm going to start with this guy right here. And we're just going to kind of block in the orange of Mr. Fox. Now I can see my pencil lines through, so we'll probably have to do kind of a, a white mix shortly. But I feel like, you know, if you're having a little bit of doubt about your... Um, about your fox guy, sometimes just getting some of the color on is can really help in terms of improving your confidence and making you realize you're a lot closer than you thought. So we're kind of doing the outside portions of the body, kind of a little zone between the legs below the ruff. Maybe we'll do the edge of the ruff just like so, just kind of an outline on the ruff. And we'll maybe do a little bit below his face it's going to get covered over, but, it, but again, if this is a base coat, then we're adding some, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A little color there for when we add other stuff to it. So now grabbing a little white, I'm just going to kind of go to town with this guy and we'll work on the orange first. So a little white, take the orange, mix it together. My pencil lines are very, very obvious, at least to me. I think you guys can see them too. So we'll just get, we'll, we'll get, we'll get some of that titanium because it's like the great it's the great covers everything. And again, if you guys have any kind of questions, let me know. And as you come on, say hi so I know you're there. It's always fun to chat with you. So again, this is like my favorite trick, always just mixing a little bit of white in with my color to create a really nice kind of primer base coat 
and ensure that whatever's underneath really can't be seen. So it's never quite the right color when you first put it on, but it sets the tone just like a just like a paint primer if you're trying to paint, you know, a dark colored wall in a house. And I think since I'm here, I'm gonna bring a little bit of the rough out the sides right here, just a little line out on either side of his of his of his face, and then kind of connect it down almost like a little triangle. I might as well add a little something there too. Again, just trying to cover up my pencil lines. So you could also sketch this, you know, you could have sketched it with a paintbrush or whatever, but you know, we're all way more comfortable with, uh, with pencils, right? Okay, that's looking pretty well, pretty well covered. So I'm gonna give it a quick blast. And go ahead and offload your brush right now. We don't need to rinse it. We want just a little touch of that orange on it, but you really want it to be basically a dry brush, like so. All right, Mr. Fox is all dry. And now we'll take a little bit of that white over here and kind of pull it off and kind of scrub the brush into it. Notice, I don't know, maybe you can see that. A little bit of the orange pigment is coming out. Oh, and you want the link to the mermaid brushes. So you have to look in the, um, in the, it's not in the art supply section. It's in the nail supply section, oddly enough. So we're going to take that kind of mixed white. It's got a slight orange tinge to it and kind of start to fill out that rough. Again, we don't have to worry about like perfect, perfect coverage right now. We just want to kind of Kind of get it, get it there to fill that in, and then bring it slightly down a little bit between the between the front paws, but not too much. We'll take that same color and we will fill the top of his or her tail, and then oops, looks like I'm running a little low, so I'm going to grab some white over here and maybe a pinch of that lightened orange and mix it together to just create more. So it's like the tiniest kiss of orange and mostly white. And then we'll kind of just fill in the eye zone. And sure, we kind of drew those eyes in. Look at that, isn't it? It's already getting cute. Add a touch more. So a little bit of a whiter, whiter edge right against the orange. And like right along out here, I'm gonna get a brighter white kind of on the outside portion, but the part closer to the neck is gonna stay that slightly darker color. And then we'll take some poofy right here on the tail and kind of bring it, then a little bit of the orange color and just kind of bring it. So I'll tell you guys, I'm like a huge fan of tracers, but I feel like, you know, we're trying to keep this very low key. And so I did not offer a tracer in hopes that we could kind of have fun with our, with our, um, whatever it is we're doing here, free handing. Okay, go ahead and offload your brush. If there's a teeny smidgy smidge of white left over, that's fine, but get it pretty dry. And as I offload, because it's starting to get stiff, it kind of flattens out. So you may need to just kind of spin, spin your um, brush a little bit and we'll come back into the orange and the orange should be fairly dry and we'll get a little bit of that. That in there so again those oops those pencil lines are were really showing through so we had to kind of layer it up a couple times coming out the sides getting his little body a little oranger now I would like to make a few parts of his fur a little bit more intense, right? Because this is a very orange fox right now. A little bit of orange there, a little tiny kisses of orange there. Maybe down his nose a touch. A little bit more red. So I'm gonna grab, um, this is red hot. This is like a really cool color. Um, but you could also do it with a regular red. Um, any old red will do. In fact, I'm gonna go with a regular red just because I'm figuring like, Maybe one or two of you has red hot, um, but a majority of the world probably doesn't. Okay, here we go. So we have our Tuscan red. It tends to be a slightly bluish red. So I'm just putting the tiniest little kiss of red on my palette here. 
I'm going to take a little dip on my brush, bring it over here for mixing. I'm going to take a big old hunk of orange and mix, mix, mix to get a ready orange. And that's a bit closer to red than orange still. So I'll probably take a little bit more orange and mix it in. So good. Now I've got some nice um, alternate colors to kind of add in there. So let's do a little bit of intensity kind of over his ears. Actually, let me dry this guy first. I want to do on, on canvas blending, but I think also we'll be better off this way. So, all right, better. So we'll do a little bit of intensity over his ears right in here, a little bit kind of down the center of his face and out the sides, a little bit on the kind of right in between his front paws and his torso. So now you've got a little differentiation between his torso and his tail. And then we'll do a couple of just orange, darker orange bits along the bottom portion of his tail to give it a little bit of shadow. So notice we're also just using that more intense orange in a few of these spots as a way to kind of add some contrast and maybe a couple of just tiny little dits of that, dits and dots of that orange under his chin of the ready orange. Offloading your brush. Grabbing a little last whoop, bit of your orange here, maybe even with a, a tiny smidgey smidge of white in it. We're going to come in and just add some, add some little blending along here. Just a little bit. You could also keep this totally solid colors and it would look super adorable. Ah, oh, we need some black. I forgot about the black. All right, just grab 10 times too much. So a kiss of black, just a kiss. I'm not rinsing my brush, just a kiss over here. See that tiny just tip? Come over here and then I'm gonna grab the last of the orange and blend it. Cause I'd like something just shy of black. And we'll take that and we'll kind of fill in his little paws right up in here. And that slightly lighter color makes it blend a little bit nicer into the orange of his, orange of his legs the upper portion and fill in the little, little, little round part there. I'm going to add a touch more black. I think I'm going to come in and go full black on his paws and then blend a little bit of that black up, up his legs, but not all the way to the top. We want some of that brown to show because it kind of creates a good, good transition for him. You offload your brush grab a little bit more of that brown tone, and then we can do a gentle blend between the black and the brown. Cool beans. Now he's looking foxy, fox and socks. Offload your brush and give it a quick rinse. We're gonna step down to a smaller brush. If you've got a liner brush, you will be super happy with that. And hopefully you've still got, oh, oof, my brush has a lot of stuff on it. Let's see. Where's my pretty happy liner brushes? Here's one. Okay. So again, me and my mermaid brushes. So I'm gonna start with a lighter brown here that we just mixed for his legs. I'm gonna just kind of place his eyes in the sort of upside down smiles. A little dark bit for his nose right here and maybe a small line kind of going right down the center. It kind of hints at a mouth. And this is kind of just, it's very cutesy, right? We want a little tip on his, a little tip on each of his ears. So kind of darkening the tips of his ears. Yeah. yeah, I got to grab a little bit more orange here and mix some more. I'm going to do a little bit more on his ears. I'm trying not to block any views here with my hands. Just intensify that a little bit. And then we'll kind of bring a little bit, a little bit of dark right in kind of where the ears meet, meet the head. Offloading the brush, going to grab a little bit of white. I did not rinse my brush, so I get a bit of a gray kind of. 
And then I sort of soften those ears a little bit, kind of creating the, the line and then almost like little furry ears. Honey cute. I love this guy. Maybe I'll give him a couple of little toes. Boop, boop. I don't know. That was kind of silly. All right. Let's go ahead and rinse this brush for a minute now and we'll get the background going. So for the background, I envision like a bright blue. Now let's see. So here's a whole tub of blues that we could choose from. Like any of these is fine. I have on the paler side, Provence Sky, which has almost got a purple tone to it. So I'm leaning against this one. I feel like it's going to neutralize this too much, um, but that's an option. I have a Craft Smart Bright Blue, which will be awesome. It's almost tape blue. I have Electric Blue from Apple Barrel, also good. Um, let's see, True Blue from Deco Art Americana. And... Just plain old blue from Craft Smart Premium. This one's a satin. Cassie, I know you asked about satin. Was it Cassie? No. Yeah, it was Cassie who asked about satin. Um, so I sometimes get the satin finish when that's all they got access to. And then here's the crisp blue that we used last night. I really like this crisp blue. So I'm gonna um I'm gonna use that one. But really any of those would do. Now another option we've got going is if we want to add a little bit of like a shimmer, Let me move all this paint out of the way into its little bucket. So it's not in my space. We could do like a sapphire shimmer blue on top. And I've got the um, blue sapphire from Folk Art or the sapphire from Deco Art, um, the Extreme Sheen. So, but, oof, okay, no mess. But putting the metallic like that directly on the wood will take a bunch of coats. So we're going to just start with a regular blue and we can make the decision about metallics or no metallics after we get the blue on. So pull my bigger brush out. I think I should be good with that bigger guy. And we're just gonna, I guess we'll start at the top. Actually, it doesn't matter. We This is a circle because I pinned it to my thing so I can literally just rotate it to, to meet my needs the whole way. Just get a good outline around our little foxy friend here. Foxy. Like a hair in the way. Yep. So I'm also envisioning like snowflakes or something in the sky. All right, so my tail color is almost the same color as this wood. So I'm gonna kind of create like a little fluffy shape around the tip of that tail just so that I don't inadvertently paint over it. And we may wanna come back and amplify a couple of these, a couple of these lighter spots here because they're not very white. But when in doubt, I always like to go start a little darker and then I can always layer some of the lighter stuff on top if I need to. And all it does is it just makes it seem a little bit richer. Let's see. So Elaine says, oh, so when you search the pieces you found were nine, nine and up. Yeah. I think I've still got a link for these. Well, so these ones are a different set. Um, I looked at the nine and up one too, Elaine. They were pretty cool. All right. So again, one of the benefits to having this guy all here is you can literally just, oh, hey there, Evie. Thanks for saying hi. Evie's joining us from the online paint night group. So remind me not to miss that part, okay, guys? Cause you know, that's like exactly what I'll do. So with a blue, you can add a little extra sort of that fluffy look to the tail just by kind of keeping a soft sort of wispy, wispy brush stroke. And just kind of getting around those, those little paws. I don't know how I feel about the little white marks I put on his paws. I mean, they're kind of cute and they're kind of weird. So it's probably one of those things I'll sleep on and be like, yep, love it, or nope, that's kind of dumb. And then again, coming around here. And again, we've kind of got his tail here, so we want to take some strokes to make it look, oh, I'm sorry, you guys totally can't see that. 
strokes that make it look kind of fluffy. Hopefully not creepy, but slightly fluffy. And I might even bring some of that blue in a very, very gentle line down. It's very hard to see and it starts to fade. So it's not supposed to be like in your face blue. It really just adds like that feeling of a shadow. And we'll come in here and kind of get around his, his, his cutesy face. So he's kind of standing on, I'm not sure what. So we probably need to fix that, right? You know, I'm also going to take a touch of this blue into the insides of his ears. Not a lot, but just a little. And I know that seems weird, but, you know, blue is the complementary color to orange. And so it actually makes a really great kind of shadow color. All right, go ahead and offload your brush. You don't need to rinse it because we're gonna grab a little bit of white and kind of get put this guy on maybe a snowy ground. And you'll notice it's blending really nicely with that blue. The snow is never actually white. And then we can add a little bit more white in a few spots just to kind of give it that streaky, Kind of streaky, streaky look. We like that. There we are. Well, you guys are awesome for hanging in here with me. I know the last couple nights I've been painting really late because it's been it's been a bit of a crazy week. So I'm thinking we could even, all right, so I'm kind of just playing with this horizon line. When I was sketching this out, I forgot to add the horizon line in my own design or my sort of my, my practice design because, you know, I don't want to come out here and just completely wing it. I mean, I could, but you never know if it'll turn out. Yeah, that looks, that makes more sense. So we, we raised it up a little bit so it looks like his bum isn't like hanging off the horizon. Just the little things. I'll fold that brush, go ahead and rinse it. And now we're going to add some snow. So I was very much feeling like the cutesy um, snow that looks like Jack's would be like perfect for this guy. Oh shoot, I wanna add more white to this guy, I'm sorry. So I do wanna amp up his, his the rough, his rough. So with that same brush that you just rinsed and washed, we get it nice and clean, we can kind of come in and add a couple of white sort of pow highlights, kind of more on the outer portion a little bit here, maybe a couple of little streaks in his tail just to make it look fluffy. Yeah, that that helps a lot. You can kind of even take it out a bit to keep him looking fluffy. A few slight streaks on the inside here, but leaving some of that slightly darker white to show. And then his face will kind of come out and do a little bit of, a little bit of white, kind of streaky. Again, perfectly fine for some of the lighter stuff to, um, or the darker stuff underneath to show. Oh, Melanie says, what a cutie. Thank you, thank you. I don't know, do we want some streaks in this zone here? Maybe just a little bit by his ears to kind of soften the, soften it a bit. Yeah, oh my gosh, I just want to snuggle him. Such a softie. Okay, now let's do the thing. So if you have a white paint pen or like a, like a jelly roll, you can totally use that. You can also use a fine, fine, fine tip brush. It's gonna be up to you. Let me see if this guy works. Well, first and foremost, we'll go through what, what a snowflake, how I do these snowflakes. I do an X, like Malgam X, and then a line through it. And that is usually sufficient. I feel like this is so small, I'm not gonna add the little balls on it, kind of like we did with our snowman selfies project. Um, but if you're doing bigger ones, then that just makes it look like, like a real, really very caricatured, which is fun. Let's see, does this pen work? It does work, yay! So X and a line. So we got our first snowflake. And we'll just do a couple of these X's with a line through them. You can make some of them smaller. You can do them at angles. Just remember, 
to keep it that kind of steep X before you cross the line through it. And this is a Sakura Jelly Roll um, 08. I think it's a fairly fine point. I'd like it to be a little bit wider point, to be honest, but sometimes you just you take what you got. I know some people love these things, but I've yet to be truly impressed. They don't work in my notebooks. Wow. So we'll do a bigger one here. Boop. And of course, we're going to need a smaller one here. It didn't get quite as small as I'd hoped. I'm just drawing a, a bunch of cute, like different sized flakes. So whether that means some of them are near, some of them are far, or it's just that that is how random nature works. A little bit of both. So they're always six, six pointed. Although I promise this year during ski season, I will check again and see if I can find an eight pointed one, but so far no dice. Nature likes them or designs them in sixes. Sometimes they come down missing an arm, but you can tell that they're missing an arm. All right, so that's pretty fun, right? Now he looks like really festive. I'll do a partial one here that's kind of coming off the edge. Maybe one more partial one. See if I can. Yeah. And so your brain's going to be happier if you do maybe one or two slightly off the edge. It just looks. Uh oh. Sorry, that's my alarm that says I got to go pick up my kid from soccer. And hey, perfect timing, right? Because I think we pretty much got this done. Oh yeah, I was going to do it. I was going to do it. I was thinking about a shimmer blue, but I think he's really good kind of in this nice matte finish. So we will pull that off, grab our gold, which per usual I've placed somewhere. Thankfully I have like 10 bottles of this stuff so I can find another one somewhere, right? Maybe. Oh, you guys, I got to tell you my house, I got like stuff everywhere. Okay. So we're going to try a different gold today. I have the Deco Art Americana Splendid Gold. It's not bad. It is not the same as the Extreme Sheen. The Extreme Sheet is just the bomb.com. Um, but this stuff is good enough. So don't feel like you have to do the Extreme Sheen, but oh my God, your mind will be blown. So in fact, this right here is Extreme Sheen. And if I do kind of side by side with it, you can tell that the shimmer factor is not the same. It's it's a little bit kind of creamier. This one just really jumps off the, it really jumps out at you. But I think if I just do right here, no one will be the wiser. And if I notice it later and it really bugs me, I can always go over it. But as far as just giving it a good, clean, pretty finish, I think that sets us up for success. So we did it in 33 minutes. Not bad, especially since we sketched it twice. So remember, don't freak out about freehanding it. We have this whole method here. So you just go back to the beginning of the video and watch the step-by-step -step so that you can learn how to get that put together. That way, again, for those of you who are not comfortable with the drawing portion or just kind of would like it to be a lot closer to perfect than, than winging it, you can do it. And there he is, guys. Well done. We'll see you tomorrow for the next one. Have a great night. Bye, guys.